An important part, especially when you get old, is you gotta start stretching, otherwise you'll pull something. Are you guys lacking confidence or struggling to get over down trees or up ledges and sharp obstacles while you're out on the trail? Today's Back to Basics video is gonna show you some tips and techniques on how to start cleaning those climbs. All right, so before we just jump out to the trail and show you guys a, you know, a tall ledge that you might not be comfortable with doing, we're gonna start with some of the very basic techniques and skills that are gonna make unlocking those moves a lot easier. So first we're gonna just find a simple curb. Um, now some of you guys might just wanna fast forward this part. If not, that's cool. We're gonna show you guys the simple movement to get up a curb smoothly in a pedal stroke so that you can take it to the trail. All right, so a curb may not sound like that exciting of an obstacle, but it's gonna be a great spot for you to learn the physical input that you're gonna put into the bike, as well as how the bike is gonna to react to that input from you. You'll be able to transfer the timing, the skill, the technique from this small feature that is safe to learn on and easily repeatable anywhere, and how that will apply to a larger step and larger obstacles, which we are gonna tackle next and then move on to a trail feature. All right, so on this one, I'm just gonna roll up and execute. So pay attention to my body and what the bike is doing. So you'll notice one of the first things I do as I approach the curb is actually compress and push down on the suspension. Um, and what that's going to do is put the bike in an upward motion by the time I get to the curb. Obviously, the size of the obstacle and the speed I'm riding, as well as the steepness of the pitch at, that I'm approaching the obstacle is gonna dictate how much I can press down. But if you look at, without me pulling up, as I roll into this and just press down, that bike is going to naturally want to hop up because it's not just impacting the curb, it's actually unweighting and the rebound from the fork is going to help get me up and over. Similarly, as my back tire approaches, I'm just slightly compressing that rear shock and that is going to also coincide with the rebound coming up and my feet lifting on the pedals. I am clipped in right now, um, which I think is a huge advantage for this type of riding. However, with a flat pedal, you've just got that technique of scooping the, the pedals and your feet up. But that's the important thing is to just to get that timing of compressing and picking up. And again, that is going to change. But once you can master going up a curb like that at slow speeds as well as faster speeds, you've got the technique down. Just on the other side of this curb, we found this little retaining wall here that is about axle high. I would say that's a pretty common obstacle to encounter on the trail. Now you'll notice we're on an approach instead of flat ground. That is going to greatly change how you can be over the bike pressing down. You're now going to have to deal with speed loss because you are going up a hill, which means you're timing of the pedal strokes as well as the right gear selection and approach speed are all going to come into play. You want to be in a gear that you're not spinning too fast because you're not going to have enough forward drive. However, you don't want to be in too hard of a gear to where you're you know, fatigued and it's not something that you can actually get into and pedal because you're already tired on a climb. So right now I'm pedaling a very high cadence, but I'm not going very fast. So now that I'm here, I just, I'm spinning so fast, I don't have time to get settled. And if I were to stop pedaling, I would run out of speed. I just, I'm not going fast enough to have enough momentum to get me from here where I need to lift that front tire to where I'm gonna lift my back tire. All right, so with a little bit harder cadence, I have more speed to coast and get up. You need to get that back tire up, right? And that is going to involve a movement that I would like to say is all in the hips. Now what I did was Again, just compress that rear end and pick up and push forward. And that's why, again, I like to have my seat dropped a little bit, depending how big the obstacle, how strong I'm feeling. 
I'll lower it anywhere from 25 to 50, 60 percent so it's out of the way and I can get that back tire up without hitting my butt. Now I know we started out just talking about ledges and obstacles. This isn't quite one of those things. However, the skill set translates very well. Some people, if it's a flat trail, they might just rely on speed and hammer into this thing as hard as they can and try to get up it. Now, if you round a corner and this is in front of you, that's not an option. So you need to have the skills and techniques to do this. Now, slowly climbing up everything's not an option, right? You're gonna be hitting your pedals right here at the peak, right? This is the apex of that climb. I'm gonna show you two ways and two speeds at which we're gonna attack this climb and climb up it successfully. So this first example is going to be the option we all would prefer, which is a straight line of sight, the ability to get momentum and speed and come at that thing confidently. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna hit it head on. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna give a little compression. I'm gonna lift that front tire up so I'm absorbing and cushioning that transition. So that way I, my bike is closely matching the rise of that incline. It's gonna allow me to keep more momentum going up rather than absorbing that impact and slowing me down. All right, so in that, I actually kind of did two hops. Um, and that was a little bit of a preference because I wanted to keep my, my speed going forward. I lifted up, I picked up the back end and I landed probably about halfway up with that back end. And as quick as my tire was down and I felt composed, I gave it another hop. That way my back tire was on the uphill as short as possible. And what that means is I'm not losing momentum. I'm, the faster I can get over that and back on flat terrain and on the pedals, the faster I can go. So next, we're gonna show you what it looks like at a very slow speed if you just rounded a corner and you're faced with that obstacle. All right, so here we are on a trail climbing. We just round a switch back and see this ledge, right? I don't have momentum or speed. I get one pedal stroke and that's all I've got, right? So. I give a pedal stroke, that same acceleration that we did to get up that ledge, it gets me about halfway up that rock. And if I didn't do that pickup thrust, I would have just stalled out, fallen backwards, looped out, whatever it might be. We've all done it. So if you can round that corner, get a good acceleration crank, which is why timing and gear selection are important, seat height important, get up on that ledge and then give it all you've got to thrust forward and you'll break that peak. So obviously a lot of the features we've been talking about are on climbs, but you don't always encounter shelves or obstacles on climbs. Sometimes it's a fat, flat bit of trail. Now we don't have a ton of downed trees in this park where we're filming. However, if you look at this rock and the diameter of this tree, they're very similar. So we're gonna just pretend this is a downed tree. You might live in an area that doesn't have trees and all you've got are big rocks. Um, but the approach is much going to be the same. What I like to do when possible, and if you're comfortable, is come in with enough speed to where I can compress, get my tire up over the hump, and then once I'm about here, compress that back end so that I'm clearing the obstacle and catching a bit of downside if possible, right? If it's, if it's a log or a rounded rock, if you, any downside or transition you can catch, you can use to accelerate you out the backside. Rather than make this an obstacle that slows you down, you can try to make it something that accelerates you out. I know it's scary, uh, especially for newer riders or those that are not comfortable. Momentum is your friend. Remember this, remember it, remember it. If you're braking, if you're going slow, if you're weighting that suspension and you're hitting bumps and rocks, all that energy, right? When the suspension compresses, it's going down. And the fork, when it goes down, it's going forward, it's throwing you forward. That means when you go into here, everything's wanting to stop you and throw you over the bar. So momentum's your friend. If you've got the speed, the bike will float and go over things a lot easier. I know we're getting in the weeds, we're talking about climbing here, but momentum, it's your friend. So let me get on the bike and show you guys how to get over this downed tree or rock. You take that moment to fixate. That's where I'm aiming my front tire. As soon as that front tire hits, I'm shifting my weight, I'm compressing, and I'm going from being back here on the bike to get that lift feel, and I'm instantly shoving 
my body, my hips, that same motion into a forward lunge to get my back tire into that same spot. So if you watch that, as I'm coming in, it's a compression, almost like a little manual or you're rolling off a curb. Front tire, dead center. And this is something, again, if this is a downed tree, you wanna aim for the peak of that tree. Aim there, boom. Next part of the bike that touches it is the rear tire in almost the exact spot. All right, so before we set you loose on the trail, we're gonna show you guys a couple last examples. Now, what I really like about this section is it's uh, similar to what you would find on a trail, right? There's kind of a, a, an A-line and a B-line, so to speak, and the B-line has a couple of nuances that really increase the difficulty um, from being a pretty simple rock roll. So this is, you know, in and of itself, not a very techy or difficult rock roll. Um, it's a good way for you guys to practice those skills. What increases that difficulty is that there's a shelf right here and it's probably only about six or seven inches. Um, it is angled and rocky. So what that means is you're not going to be able to just pedal into this rock and practice that, that feature. You're going to have to have a little bit of power and you might have to do like a kind of a double thrust <laughs> to get up here um, or get a little bit of a half crank in here. Then of course you've got the pro line we'll call it which is going to be in some ways harder and in some ways easier right here you've got three obstacles to deal with one two three with this you only got one obstacle to deal with which is this big rock you got to have the strength the power and the technique so first we're going to start with this low line and show you what this is going to look like all right, so there's two options. One where I compressed and hopped from the bottom to get me up. Uh, that was one where I had a little more speed. I felt a little more froggy and had some more uh, momentum. The second was where I kind of crawled up and when I felt like I was starting to stall, I relied on that thrust to break that, that apex and get me over the top. All right, so as you saw, didn't start from that far back, didn't have that much speed, but the key is settling, compressing to get that hop. Once you get that hop thrust and drive it forward, your whole body has to just push the bike up and forward. Don't take a second. Don't be like, yes, I made it. Instantly start pedaling again. <laughs> celebrate once you're up here and your celebration is worth it because that's a challenging feature and your friends are gonna be impressed when they see you out climbing next time you go for a ride. All right, so bonus extra credit here. We're taking it to a trail scenario and not just tackling one obstacle, but two. Actually, it's kind of more like two and a half. Um, and what I mean is our last feature was just a single rock stack. Now here we've got this little step, a secondary step here. And then once you get up this, you've literally got one bike length from where your back tire is on to where you're at another axle high step up that you've got to navigate. Now this is going to be the kind of thing that once you nail down the body dynamics, the compression, the gear selection, seat height, and you get that hip thrust maneuver down, nope. this is going to be what you can start trying to achieve and conquer on your favorite local climbs. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you all for tuning in. I really hope that this video has you guys itching to go out and find some local obstacles and terrain to challenge your climbing prowess. Let us know if you've got any other questions or other techniques you would like to learn from our videos. Thank you guys. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We would greatly appreciate it, and we hope to see you out on the trails.